Hello everyone, this is Professor Vishal Gupta with the USC Marshall School of Business. This video is for BUAD 425 Data Analysis for Decision Making. And in this short video, I'm going to show you how to exclude some data for a testing set when you're doing classification. Previously in all of our labs and homeworks, I did this for you before I gave you the data set, but this may or may not be something that you want to do in the future on a project that you have at your internship or at your job. So let's get started. I'm going to use our data from the Trojan Horse Lab. Uh, I made two important changes before we started. The first is that you'll notice that I went through and I unexcluded uh, all of the data that I excluded before. I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. And the second important thing is I deleted this testing column that once was here. So this is probably what the data looks like before you get anything and do any separation. And I'm going to show you first how to exclude some of the data, and then second, how to create that column testing. So the key thing when you're creating testing data is that you want the testing data to look as much like the future data that you'll see in your business as possible. So let me say this again. The key thing that you want when you're creating testing data is that you want the testing data to look as much like the future data that you'll see in your business as possible. So what are the things that can go wrong? Well, one thing that might go wrong is that when someone hands you the data set, it might have been that they had already sorted it in some way. So for example, it might be that someone had given you this data set and before giving it to you, they had sorted it so that all of the men were on the top. Then if you simply excluded the first 5,000 rows or so for testing data, you would have actually just excluded all the men from your data set. And so this, the resulting data set wouldn't look very much like the data you'd see in the future. So what we want to do instead is first randomly shuffle the rows in this data set so that we'll get a random subset of them. And then we'll exclude the first, let's say, 50%. So how do we randomly shuffle the rows? Well, I'm going to go over here to the end of my data set. And I'm going to create a new column by double clicking. And I'll call that new column, let's say, random. And here in the column properties, I'm going to select it and go into formula. So now I'm saying to jump that I'd like to populate this column with a formula. You usually do this in Excel by just typing equals. And then I'm going to go through and click edit formula. So what formula do I want to put here into this function? Well, if you scroll down here in Excel, you'll find this function random, and I'll choose random uniform. What jump will do now is it'll populate each value in the columns, 17, uh, with a randomly drawn uniform random variable. Okay, so I'll hit OK. If we go back here to jump now, we see that I have my column random, and there are a bunch of random numbers between 0 and 1 that are drawn here. So now to randomly sort my data, to shuffle it around, I'm just going to choose this column, and I'm going to hit sort on this column, and I'll hit sort ascending. So you'll notice two things if you look quickly. The first is that it's true, my columns have shuffled around, my rows, sorry, have shuffled around, which is good, what I wanted. And secondly, that after they shuffled around, these random numbers changed again because they're set as a formula, so every time I do a change on the spreadsheet, uh, or I should say, every time I do a change on the jump spreadsheet, these random numbers will change. That's okay, because now that they're, I've reshuffled the rows, I don't really care about these random numbers anymore. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete them. So now, so far, all I've really done is I've gone through and I've randomly shuffled my data around. All right, now to make my testing set, I'll just choose whichever, however many variables I want to put aside. Now this might be 50% of my data, it might be 20% of my data, it might be something else. In general, there are no hard and fast rules about how much data you should set aside for testing. In this case, I'm going to put aside, let's say, 50%. Since there's 2,000 variables, I'll put aside 1,000 of them. So I'll just go from row 1 to row 1,000, hold down shift. Press for a thousand and it selects all of them. And then I'll go through and right click these groups, and you'll see that there is a choice to exclude, unexclude. And now I can exclude those first thousand entries to be the ones that I've put aside as testing data. 
All right, I'm almost done. The last thing that I'm going to do, just for some bookkeeping and to make my life easier in the future, is I'll add one last column which corresponds to the testing value. So I'll make a new column, I'll call it testing, and I'll initialize the data with a constant, which is the constant one. And now you'll see that jump has created a new column for me that has a one everywhere along the whole data set. I'd like it instead to only have ones whenever I have this no smoking symbol. So in order to do that, I'm going to go through and go down to that 1000 again. So I'll go down to this row 1000. In row 1001, I'll write my zero because this begins my training data. And if you right click this, jump gives you the option to fill and then fill to end of table. If I select that, we can see that all the remaining entries then get a zero. So now I've correctly set up my data where half of it has been excluded to use as testing data, half of it remains to use as training data, and every piece of data that I've excluded I've marked as a one in this testing column. You'll need to do this sort of exclusion or inclusion if you want to set up uh, any classification where you want to use the go button in a decision tree. Now as a last piece of bookkeeping, maybe sometimes you set aside some testing data and you set, you set aside too much or you want to redo it or something like this. How do you get it back and get rid of these no smoking symbols? The same way that you got them, just select them, right click, and you can exclude on exclude. I'll put those back just for safekeeping. All right. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or reach out in class.